Hello everyone, it's Leo, and today we're going to talk about episode 36 from Tropic of Rouge Precure, another one of those great episodes. I really, really loved this one, and I feel like one particular reason that I thought this episode was superb was the soundtrack. If we were having a, an, an episode that the girls were actually going to Grand Ocean, the real Grand Ocean, we would probably see a more upbeat and happy and peppy soundtrack with the girls having fun there. But this soundtrack never really got there and it always made it clear that something was wrong. There were so many silent moments, there were so many tense songs, and the songs never really got that happy. I really loved the work they did with the soundtrack, but not only that. Narrative-wise, I also thought that this was great. So the episode started with a very interesting Manatsu dream, and I really liked that this was like a first-person dream, like Manatsu was actually experiencing a battle as a cure, and she was battling against the witch directly. Uh, it's important to remember that the only person who knows who the witch is, is Laura, because Laura has already met her. The other girls, they've never seen the witch, they don't know her, so Manatsu doesn't really know she didn't really know what she was fighting against, but she was fighting. And it was clear in a moment that it was the legendary cure because we were able to see her face. And that's when Manatsu realized that she was actually having a dream and she was the legendary cure in that dream. Other interesting things to notice about that fight was that it seems that everything around them was on fire or destroyed. It was very dramatic. It had a very dramatic effect. And the most important thing was Manatsu was able to feel whatever the cure was feeling and the, her feeling at that moment was sadness. So we combine that with the fact that the legendary cure already appeared in Tropical Rouge and told the girls to save the witch and we see her fighting directly against the witch and feeling sadness because she had to fight the witch. There is something there. What do you think it is? Uh, I'm very curious. Another thing that was pointed out by a Japanese user on Twitter is that the Legendary Cure was using the Pact, the same wand that the Tropical Rouge girls use. But in her wand, we could see a different thing, which is the Land Ring. So the Land Ring is probably coming from her, or she used the Land Ring in battles. Maybe this means that the Marine Ring was used by another cure? We're gonna discover that next week. But let's talk about today's episode. Oh my God, let's focus on this amazing episode. So the girls are invited to Grand Ocean. They're very excited. And look, I really loved that moment in school that we were able to see like the different reactions. We first had Asuka, which asked a very pertinent question like, could the queen always contact you like this, Laura? And Laura was also surprised by the fact that the queen um, was able to contact her. And one of the questions was, the Grand Ocean did, had no motivation at all. And now they do have motivation. What is going on? And Laura explained that the queen told her that the motivation is back and that's why she was able to contact everybody. That was very cool. Like They quickly dismissed this, we were able to see the other girls' reactions. I really loved Sungo's reaction because Sungo reacted to Minori's reaction and the little scream she did when she noticed that Minori was like all psycho with her reactions. Oh my God, that was so amazing. And you know, Minori being the mermaid nerd she is, she was feeling super happy and excited that she was able to go to Grand Ocean. I loved that. Like that moment was golden. Really, really liked that. It really showcases each girl's personality and I really loved. So they went to Grand Ocean. There was this whole lore of how Grand Ocean works and how you can get there. Only sea fairies and mermaids can create that path and that's when they did. They went there, they were received by everyone. The scene was very tame and the soundtrack was also very tame. But it was very nice, you know, like visually it was beautiful and the girls, the way the girls reacted to that was also very interesting. When they got to the actual kingdom was when things started getting more interesting. So we first have the fact that the girls are able to breathe 
even without their cure forms, and that's easily explained, quickly explained by Asuka uh, with their lipsticks. And Manasu even jokes about that, and they're like, no, this only works in Grand Ocean. Kids, don't try it at home. And so the girls meet the queen, and it was very funny. That scene with the queen was very funny because Manatsu presents herself, and she asks the queen's name, and they were like, oh, this is so rude, Manatsu, and the queen just says, oh, I'm just the queen. And, like, that was so weird. Doesn't the queen have a, have a name? Like, when she becomes a queen, she loses her personality and she is just the queen. Like, if Laura becomes the queen, she won't be Laura anymore. She's just going to be a queen. That is kind of weird. But since that was not the real queen, let's not overthink that too much. And, it, like, the episode made it very clear that something was wrong right at that moment with Kududun trying to interact with the queen and noticing something was wrong. For a person like me who always like reads synopses and everything and checks out magazine scans and little titles and everything, I already knew. But I feel like for people who don't follow this kind of thing and just watch the episodes, this might have been like the biggest hint that there was something off. But it was clear even before that with the soundtrack, with the way things were when they arrived. I think that there was a very sweet and lovely scene with the girls talking about their experiences as cures and how that brought them together, how that brought them lots of different experiences in life that they would never experience if they didn't become a cure. That was very, very cute. Loved that. And then they went to eat. Loved that feast. Oh my God, it made me so hungry. The food really looked delicious. And then the, the queen said that she called them because of the marine rain. And uh, there's this rumor that the marine rain reacts to this, the land rain. And so the girls were called so they could find the marine rain. And it was very nice that Minori was the one who asked, like, do you know any legends or stories about it so that it could help us? Like, Minori being the one to make that question to you know, present that question was so good and so on brand for Minori. And the girls went on to sightsee a little bit of Grand Ocean and also search for the land ring. And when they were in the Shabon place, which was kind of pretty, uh, and it tied up to a little bit of the lore of Grand Ocean, you know, and also how Grand Ocean is shielded from the outside world, and there's this place that there is this, like this little fruit that creates uh, the kururun cookie. Like, this is adorable, you know? It's nice knowing those little bits and details of the lore of Grand Ocean that we know so little about. And at that moment, Manatsu tells the girls that, well, we, I had this dream, and the girls were like, okay, let's ask the queen. So they didn't really spend much time wandering around Grand Ocean. We didn't see that much. We didn't see that much. Which was a good thing, since this was a fake Grand Ocean, so they didn't really spend much time on that. And we had a very cramped episode. There were so many things happening at once that we didn't really have much time for other stuff. And I've seen lots of people complaining, like, oh, they're not going to turn into mermaids in this episode, that's a missed opportunity. I'm very thankful they didn't, because we barely had time for things that happened in this episode. If they turned into mermaids, it would be one more thing to cram in just one episode. So when they go back, it's already clear that the queen isn't the real queen because of the way she talks about Kududun, the way she talks about the sweet, the, the fruits. Everything felt super shady and it was clear that something was wrong. And then Shongiri appeared with Kududun and then, well, it was all an illusion created with the help of the witch's power. And when they got to that other room and the whole plan was created, the queen, the real queen, was captured. It was so smart. It was such a smart plan to get fairies from Grand Ocean and to use their memories to recreate a real Grand Ocean. That was such a thoughtful plan. I loved that. And when the fight started, they were supposed to create a Yananeda with a living thing. So far, Yananedas have been created with objects, and now we have a Yananeda with a living thing. And look, the fact that they highlighted this information so many times that a Yananeda 
cannot be created by a living thing and then they're using it as an exception because they're so dangerous makes me believe that in the past it already happened and the experience did not go well. Is the queen a Yaranega? Like, was she created through a Yaranega? Like, she was not supposed to be like that and then she became a Yaranega? I don't know. All I know is that it felt very shady that the villains kept on highlighting this information so many times. And look, the fight in this episode, the animation was not the best, but I feel like the fight itself was kind of fun to watch. I mean, the girls were having a hard time, yeah, but we could see like some great papaya moments, you know, I liked that papaya spinning around, using her beam, things were nice. You know, they tried something and I enjoyed it. Their group attack did not work. And, you know, it's very funny seeing the victory moments, the victory scene uh, without the, the victory part. You know, they're celebrating, but they're not celebrating. We could see it in their faces. It's very funny. And they are captured and uh, we could see the feelings of each of the girls trying to protect Grand Ocean and the fact that that land was all fake and the real one has to be protected. So it was a very sweet moment seeing each of the girls' feelings towards this topic. Marine Ring appeared and Butler was ready, ready to capture it. Ready. And look, I already talked about the soundtrack and the soundtrack was incredible. But when Butler got the Marine Ring, a rock number started and I felt it. I felt afraid. I felt scared of Butler because of the soundtrack. And this plan was such a smart plan for throughout the whole season. If you think about the plans they've made, there is nothing like that stands out, but this one was awesome. Great, great, great plan. And you know, everything felt so right narrative wise. And Butler was so smart with this plan. Oh my God, I loved it. I don't know if it was Butler's plan or the, the witch's plan. All I know, it all worked. It's, it was probably Butler's plan because the witch doesn't even know that the cures are there. The cures are existing right now. And the girls are unable to get the marine ring and uh, the, the protection, the barrier that stands and protects Grand Ocean is broken and the girls are trapped into a vortex. And so, what is going to happen? Look, there are so many secrets. There are so many things for us to learn. There are so many stories untold in Tropical Rouge. I cannot wait for the next episode. I really can't. They're probably getting the ring back and we're probably going to learn more. And the preview did not show anything. It didn't show anything. They are not showing us anything. They're hiding things from us. And I love this feeling. Like, we're only gonna learn after watching the episode. That, that's, that's an amazing feeling. Like, I love this. <laughs> I love this. Because, as I said, I feel like this was a great episode. Technically, animation-wise, it was not up to, like, episode 29. It was not on the same level. Uh, but it was a great episode, I feel like, narrative-wise. And also some creative choices they've made was, were great. I really like how the narrative of Tropical Rouge pans out and I'm really enjoying the Tropical Rouge story and the way they're telling it is also very smart. Another thing that I thought this episode was nice, which was like some comments they've made about Tropical Rouge itself. You know, like uh, when they were talking about how the mermaids were born, are born in Tropical Rouge, they have no parents. This is kind of a callback to one of the episodes that Laura was imagining her parents at school and she imagined the queen because, well, there are no parents. The family relationships in Grand Ocean are probably very different from our own society. We saw the girls talking about how their own transformation devices look like shells. Loving this. Really loved episode 36. What are your thoughts on it? Please leave a comment. Let's keep talking in the comment box below. Anyways, guys, thank you so much and a special thank you to the members of the Magical Cinnamon. Thank you so, so, so much for all of your support. Thank you for standing by Magical Cinnamon. If you watch up to now, thank you so much as well. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.